Hi, I'm Ian Range from Range Education. And I'm Daniel Lawrence from Rocktech UK. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at runner's knee and what taping techniques can do to help with this condition. We're going to investigate the best ways to apply tape and discuss the mechanisms that underlie taping. Uh, this video sits very well with our bite-sized CPD video about runner's knee. If you want to see that video or more, uh, follow the links below, subscribe to our channel or go to www.rangeeducation.co.uk for more information. And for more information on Rocktape products and education, please visit rocktape.co.uk. Okay, so in our bite-sized CPD on runner's knee, we were referring to runner's knee as IT band syndrome because there are an awful lot of variations of runner's knee. Um, so, Dan, if the IT band has become very tight, I know there's a taping technique for this, but you're going to tell us what it is and we're going to talk it through and how it works. So, please, show us what to do. All right, so this is the taping technique for the ITB, for the lateral leg, and can be helpful for any pain conditions over the lateral leg as well, including the runner's knee and lateral hip pain. Fantastic, double application. Now, the key thing with this one, Ian, is applying the tapes fairly easy, especially if you've applied a few tapes before. But the key thing here is to get the tape to pass through clothing, so to pass through shorts and underwear without the patient having to um, undress and derobe, and also without you having to kind of shove your hands awkwardly um, under their yeah. shorts as well. So I'm going to show the viewers how to pass tape through clothing in a nice, easy to apply um, clinical way. Right, so I measure the tape from the head of the fibula, just as an anatomical point to give you a reference as a starting point, uh, up over the top of the pelvis, over the top of the iliac crest there. Simply enough so that it comes out the top of their shorts. Well, and that's going to presumably provide some decompression, and some proprioceptive simulation, all across those two points where we could get the, the rubbing and the pain. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yep. So there is also the leg spiral video that we've made, and this one here can also give some proprioceptive input to make changes to leg alignment, which may be just enough to reduce the onset of these symptoms, which of course yeah. typically come on with repetitive actions like running. So I've cut the tape and rounded the edges to cut away the edges which can cause the tape to peel off early and prematurely. Peel the backing paper out of the way, stretching the tape, tearing the backing paper and then you can expose the glue side and stick that down in place. Now I should just talk a little bit about the position that I've got my model in here. They're in side lying, the leg is draped down into this relaxed adducted position. There's a slight bend in the knee and this puts a slight stretch through the lateral leg yeah. and also they're comfortable during the application procedure. Good. Um. So no stretch on the anchor, I guess, as usual. Quite right, Ian, no stretch on the anchor. And then I'm doing what we call paper off tension, which is simply sticking the tape down as it peels away from the backing paper. And that's about 10 to 15% stretch. Yeah. There's a little bit of stretch integral in the tape as you take it off the backing paper. And this looks like where a problem is going to start. How on earth do we do this? Right, firstly, tear away any excess backing paper, but make sure you've got some backing paper there that you can use to tuck underneath their shorts. Then ask your patient to reach down through their shorts and importantly, through their underwear, otherwise they'll stick their underwear to themselves with the tape. <laughs> Grab the backing paper and pull it in line with the existing tape. Once the backing paper comes out the top, all you then need to do, thank you, is take the backing paper from them, pull the backing paper, continue to pull the backing paper, and it will pull the tape through with it. So then the tape arrives out the top of their shorts and it's been run through and stuck down onto the lateral leg with the tape finishing up here. If you've got excess tape, no problem, you can just cut it, but you want enough tape for it to come out the top of the shorts simply so you know it's been stuck down properly. As with the other applications, you rub the tape to make sure it's secure down onto the skin. And that is the main ITB yeah. application. Is there anything else that could go on this? Um, yes. Any decompression strips? Absolutely. Like to talk about? You did mention the decompression strip. So if there's an area of specific pain, you can take a decompression strip and apply that over the sore area. And I know we've talked about this before, but if this is the first video you've watched, uh, can you just quickly explain to us 
what that decompression strip is actually doing physiologically. Absolutely. So there's a few theories of the mechanisms by which the tape works, in particular the decompression. The idea of the decompression, the reason it's called decompression, is because you take the elasticity of the tape, place it over a sore area, and that can help to make changes to the underlying tissue tension, which can also make changes to the subcutaneous space. Yeah. And that may influence the way that the tissues slide and glide. It may also influence the pressure on nerve endings, mm. and it may also influence fluid dynamics below. Um, these theories remain in question, but they are theories that have been around for some time. Yeah. And there is ultrasound evidence out there, and MRI evidence actually, that shows taping does change the subcutaneous space, not here specifically. But the question remains is, does that change in space equate to the changes in symptoms that we see? And that's the gap in the research that's, that's yeah. not yet there yet. So the decompression piece goes over the sore area, stretch and stick. And that's the decompression there, which you can add to the ITB technique. Fantastic. And uh, as we've said before, this is something that therapists can apply to augment their treatment. Um, but let's not forget the trainers out there. Trainers, uh, if you can learn how to do this, if you go on a course, then this will really help while you're training with your clients who have a problem like this. And um, people can apply this themselves as well, I believe. People Although can. That looks like it could be a bit tricky. Yeah, you're quite right. People can self-tape themselves. Mm. And uh, even I've seen one of my colleagues taught people how to self-tape their own back, which is really helpful, but somewhat difficult to do. Yeah. Um, so as long as you can reach the area that you need to tape, then technically you should be able to, to tape. But if you do it in the right way, it's going to be much more effective. Fantastic. And this will in no way restrict somebody from squatting, running, jumping, this is a, a fully mobile tape. Absolutely, it's it a fully mobile tape and it, it, it will not restrict and it should not restrict. This particular application is not one which has any risk of restricting because we're not going directly yeah. over the joints. Yeah. Okay, so Dan's going to show us how to do what's called the leg spiral and this is useful for what we were just discussing, uh, trying to offload problems around the hip and also I believe, uh, as Dan will probably mention, around the knee as well. So uh, Dan, we've got a couple of marks here. Um, what are they for? This is just to highlight a couple of things we've been talking about, Ian. So the first one here is the uh, ITB pain over the um, femoral condyle there, so the runner's knee that we were discussing. And the other one up here is for lateral hip pain, which uh, people commonly refer to as bursitis, but often goes by the name of greater trochanteric pain syndrome um, or gluteal tendinopathy. So I've just put those areas to kind of two key points of pain, two key pathologies that, uh, that, that this technique can be useful for alleviating. Yeah, fantastic. So not just for the hip, but also for the knee. And of course, it doesn't matter whether it's trochanteric bursitis or problems over here, over the lateral aspect of the knee. If you're gonna tighten up through here, either of those could happen, so this is transferable as always for both trainers and therapists. Okay, Dan, show us what to do, please. Okay, so I'm taking some tape here and we're gonna do this technique with red tape over black leggings for demonstration purposes. But of course, when you are taping, you want to tape directly on the skin. So you may need to get your patient into a state of undress. Um, even with short shorts should be absolutely fine. So you can move the tape up through. So we start from the um, medial calf region and then we come through the medial knee over the top of the patella. I'm just going to talk it through as I measure the tape and then we come up the lateral hip over the gluteus medius region, over the superior fibres of the gluteus maximus. I'm just going to switch arms there as I bring the tape round so I can, that's it, easier for me to twist and show you. Superior fibres of the glute max and then around up to the lumbar spine, thoracolumbar fascia region as a finishing point for the tape. Wow, that's quite a wide area you're going over and quite specific in your descriptions actually. Um, why those particular lines that you're going up? Yeah, absolutely, that's a good question. So I will talk through those as I apply the tape. So I'm just gonna round the ends of the tape there and I've probably got here in a bit more tape than I need, but that's better yeah. than having not enough tape, otherwise we have to start all over again. So there we go there, brilliant. So we started on the medial calf. I'm not really too worried about where we're starting, but the most important bit here is to make sure we come through the medial knee. I'm just gonna pay a little bit of attention, of course, to our model's position here, which should be external rotation of the hip, slight bend of the knee, and because there's a slight bend in the knee and a rotation of the hip, the whole leg is rotating, therefore 
uh, our model is going to be taking some weight onto the lateral border of the foot, so a little bit of inversion occurring there as well. Okay, so through the medial knee, as the tape comes over the medial knee and then over the top of the patella, that's the first important part because we don't want the tape to go over the top of the patella. The tape's flexible, so that might be okay, but actually it, it just means that it's likely to be um, in an awkward position and therefore yeah. uncomfortable. So coming through the medial knee just works with the hinge of the knee and the tape doesn't get in the way. We also want to avoid even taping the back of the knee. Mm -hmm. The skin on the back of the knee is a bit more sensitive and also if there's a lot of knee bending going on, the tape will stick and unstick in the crevice of the joint and that will be uncomfortable. So the medial knee is a, a sensible place for the tape to go. And then we proceed with paper off tension as we spiral the tape up over the lateral leg. Any excess backing paper I can tear away just to make it easier to handle. Now, as we get to this bit here, if you can, working it with the clothing that the patient's wearing, tape stuck onto the skin with extra stretch is gonna give a bit of extra sensory input and proprioceptive input there. And the reason is this, if that's stuck down there with a moderate amount of stretch, maybe a moderate to firm amount of stretch, yeah. then as our model starts to internally rotate their leg, this will tighten up quicker if we've already pre-stretched it. And if it tightens up quicker, it gives an increased proprioceptive awareness. So yeah, that line you've taken now, I can see that now, that looks like it's going to give a lot of proprioceptive feedback and help the leg go into the external rotation we want. Yes. Um, which is really handy for training and obviously making sure things are acting exactly the way they should. And uh, I presume the tension you've put on is, does that have any other effect? Does it stop the leg coming back in at all or does the tape not work in that way? So the tension we've put on there, as we mentioned, promotes external rotation, but also it um, discourages, or if you like, demotes internal rotation. Mm. And we know from these lateral leg issues, such as the lateral hip pain or the lateral knee pain, that it can be linked to biomechanics whereby there's excess stress caused by excess internal rotation or combined with adduction of the leg. So by reducing any unwanted internal rotation, by reducing any unwanted adduction, we can biomechanically take the stress off these tissues here as well. And of course that's down to the patient to actually do and regulate that movement, but the tape here provides more information to help them achieve that during a rehab session and also to have a longer term outcome as well. So that's the completed wrap, simple as that. That's the completed leg spiral, that's a wrap. And what we now need to do is make sure that our model has the knowledge as to why we've got yeah. the tape there. It's just not there just to look funky. Yeah. And also um, right now would be a good time to start doing those strengthening and movement awareness exercises. Mm. Not tomorrow or next session, but yeah. right now because the tape's there, it's fresh. It's fresh on their mind. Literally the, the, the brain is feeling that tape after a while the sensory input from the tape will start to diminish as effectively the person gets used to it. Yeah. But whilst it's there and they're not used to it, that's the key time to capitalize on any movement changes you might like to make. So would you consider, if we were dealing with bursitis in the hip, putting a decompression strip here? Or is that not necessary in this particular pattern? Yes, you could add a decompression strip there. You're doing a couple of different things there. With this one, we're looking at movement. With a decompression strip over this area, we would be looking at simple pain relief over that area there. So we've got a movement re-education taping yep. and a simple symptom reduction, pain reduction taping as well. So two yep. different types of taping and they'd work well together absolutely yeah. fine. So decompression can work well. I just want to add in a bit of information there. If you use the wider tape, the 10 centimeter tape, over a wider area, then you're going to get a better decompressive effect. So if, if I'm taping decompressively over the lateral hip, I would use a wider tape there because essentially we grab more of the soft tissue and create more of a decompressive effect as well. So the wider tape works lovely over that area. So if I'm actually happy that my client's leg is perfectly aligned and it doesn't need this wrap, I'm just worried that they will overuse this side whilst the other side is healing, can I just put the wide decompression tape on by itself? Yeah, absolutely. So that'll be a good opportunity now for me to show you how you can do just a decompression on its own. And we'll actually use the five centimeter tape so I can show you a decompressive technique that can be really useful for sore areas. 
Okay, great. So we just talked about uh, decompression over the um, you know, greater trochanter, perhaps trying to protect against bursitis. So uh, Dan's ready to cut some strips, which is fantastic. As he's going to show us just what to do. So this is a decompression star. Effectively, if you're dealing with just a painful area and you're just looking for pain relief, then this is a useful technique that you can use. And you might want to use it after you've done some hands-on treatment, for example, and then this can help with uh, to, to you know, perpetuate and continue some of the pain relief that you may have achieved in session. So can you actually tell us why you get pain relief from, from this, from the decompression? What's occurring? Yeah, of course. So if we take an area like here that's signified with a pink tape as a common painful area over the lateral hip, with a decompression star, the decompression tapes effectively are drawing the soft tissue in towards the center. So they're creating, uh, mechanically creating more laxity and increasing the subcutaneous space over that region. So there may be um, a, a positive effect from that mechanical decompression that we yeah. can achieve. Yeah. Um, then as far as the input goes, we're providing a low level light sensory input mm. that's non-noxious and therefore that can help to reduce pain via that standard pain gating type yeah. of mechanism, yeah. so non-painful input reducing the, yeah. the pain from that region. I don't think in this case, Ian, there's um, uh, much kind of proprioceptive input going no. on. However, we you know can't deny that we are stimulating an area where there is contractile tissue mm. and therefore any activation or improved activation of the gluteal muscles would help to um, improve the function of this area and reduce the yeah. symptoms as well. So our aim is not proprioceptive, but the brain may take some proprioceptive benefit from this. And that, that's just something that, you know, is a positive, uh, positive side yeah. effect, I suppose. So I'm going to take that pink tape away now, just so it doesn't confuse you as you think you've got to stick pink tape on people. That's not the case. It was just there to highlight the point, literally. And I'm going to take the decompression pieces and apply those now. So I've cut three strips of uh, this length, so they'll sit neatly over the lateral hip. Tear the backing paper and stretch the tape from the middle and apply the tape over the saw area, with the saw area being in the center of the tape and then no stretches, and then no stretch on the end. That's the first piece. So that looked like a lot more stretch than you've put on um, the tape in some of the previous techniques you've shown. Um, was there a reason for that? Yeah, you can play around with tape stretch. With decompression tapes, it's generally okay to put more stretch yeah. through them. Furthermore, we're not on an area that's moving much. We're not over like a joint, like the knee or the shoulder. So there's not gonna be any risk of skin irritation because this area is not gonna stress the tape yeah. as it's yeah. placed in situ. So that's the first piece. I'm gonna put the second piece over there at an angle. And I've put that on there in that position so that I've got another bit of space here to apply the next piece of tape and that then creates our decompression star. Yeah. Now you'll see what we've got here is three pieces of tape. Uh, we've got three layers of tape, so two overlaps. And that's really as much as you can do with decompressions because you run out of space to put tape. Yes. And if you start putting more tape on, it just gets a bit of a clumpy layer and yeah. it, it just really doesn't work very well clinically. But the decompression star can be a lovely way of reducing pain from sore areas. Great. And a uh, final question. Is there a reason why it's a star? Can I not just take a great big flat bit of tape and put it on? You can, just take a great big flat piece of tape and put it on and that will achieve much the same thing. So there's two options really, two different ways of doing it and it might be down to your preference, it might be down to what tape you've got available and even if you've done it a few times with an individual patient, they may have a preference as well. But most people have the five centimeter tape to hand and they would default to the, to the star. Yeah, that one was quite an unusual tape, I've not seen that a lot. But, uh, thank you. Good stuff. Okay, so I have a question for trainers regarding runner's knee. As we've got a problem here that is to do with loading, can you think of any equipment or any exercises that you can do to keep your runner in running condition without having to run whilst they are recovering? And I've got a learning task for therapists to take that knee application and to teach that to somebody else so that you're able to teach it to a patient, for example.